government should not be providing food after tsunami or after any kind of natural disaster. It's not the government's role. What the government's role is, is to protect lives. Its role is to go into disaster areas and make sure that property is being protected, that lives are being protected, that people aren't looting, that people aren't killing, that there's no you know, uh, gangs taking over. Their job is a policing job. It's not a social services job. There are plenty of entities uh, that are voluntary, that are based on charity, that rush into disaster areas and fill the void where food is missing and shelter is missing and others, uh, you know, Red Cross. And indeed, you know, after Katrina, the first food to get to New Orleans was actually delivered by Walmart. Right, because they had they have much more efficient infrastructure, much more efficient transportation than the federal government uh, has. So what you what you'll see is when these natural disasters happen, a huge rise in benevolence, and people wanting to help, and people going out to help. You'll see corporations and companies and non for profits providing food and providing resources and filling in the gap that the that the government you know, supposedly fails today and, of course, fails most of the time in its support. The problem with, when, when you provide a government kind of safety net um, is that, A, you crowd out the private initiatives. You discourage private initiative that is, that is a lot more effective. But from a rights perspective, when the government does it, it does it through coercion. It does it through taking from some and giving to others. And that's just morally, politically wrong. Government should not be in the business of coercion. Uh, and it should leave charity to uh, private individuals, and there's no difference. I mean, charity in emergencies is still charity, and uh, the the facilitating of food should be left to uh, to to private charity. The other thing that government does um, by providing emergency relief is it creates huge moral hazard. So, for example, if you choose to live, you know, I don't know, near a, a flood zone. And uh, insurance companies won't insure you because th this area gets flooded. But the government is going to bail you out. Then people move into the flood zone, and they don't worry about it because the government's going to bail them out, even though they can't buy insurance. If, you, if the government stepped out of that whole business of providing relief to people, then people would have to figure out, can I buy insurance? Can I protect myself? Can I maybe store food somewhere else? Uh, you know, can I provide for myself in cases of an emergency if I'm going to live in a place that's dangerous? And that's something that people should be calculating. If you live near an earthquake zone, you should store some food. If, if, if you live in a flood area, you know, you should have a path to higher ground and you should think about what happens if you, if, if, if you get flooded. How are you going to survive? Uh, you know, again, personal responsibility. People should be thinking about these things. Everybody knew that a hurricane would hit New Orleans one day. Now, it was a disaster with a catastrophe that, that few believed would happen to the extent that it did. But people should have planned for that. Individuals should have taken responsibility for their own lives, and they should have depended on the charity of, of other people to the extent that they needed it, not my tax money.